of all the stars that have names, two-thirds of them have Arabic names. <laughs> While the constellations are Greek and Roman, the names are Arabic, all right? And the list just goes on and on and on and on. And so where does this come from? How does, it, how do, how do you get a, how does this happen? How do you get stars named with Arabic names? How does this happen? And it happens because, it happens because there was this particularly fertile period that um, Professor Weinberg duly discussed. Um, and around that period, that 300 year period, the intellectual center of the world was Baghdad. Baghdad, it was completely open to all visitors, all travelers, Jews, Christians, uh, doubters, which today we might call atheists, they were all there exchanging ideas, all of them, all of them. And it was that period we had the advances in like engineering and, and biology and medicine and, and, and mathematics, all right? Our numerals are called what? Arabic numerals, they ever stop and think about that? You know, who's, who, as in America, do we pause, take pause at this? Why are they called Arabic numerals? Okay, they fully exploit the, the discovery of the zero, create a whole field called algebra, itself an Arabic word, algorithm is an Arabic word, all this is going on and it's all traceable, not to some long thousand year tradition in, the, in Islam, it's traceable to this 300 year period. This 300 year period. And then, so they had naming rights. The most expensive, beautifully uh, carved astrolabes come out of this period. There's a great collection of these at the Adler Planetarium in Chicago, if you ever want to check them out. So navigation, celestial navigation, all of this is traceable to this period. And so something heard, 12th century kicks in, and then you get the influence of this scholar, Al-Ghazali, all right? And so, so out of his work, you get the philosophy that mathematics is the work of the devil. And nothing good can come of that philosophy. That combined with other sort of codification, philosophical codifications of what Islam would, was and would become, the entire intellectual foundation of that enterprise collapsed, and it has not recovered, it me greatly. If you do the math, okay? You know, just look, you look at all the Nobel Prize winners that ever were some even in this room, and ask how many were Muslim? And it's like one, maybe two, okay? I think a second one was in economics. And the one we referred to was uh, described earlier, the co-winner of the Nobel Prize with Professor Weinberg, uh, Abdul Salam. And he's not Middle Eastern Muslim, he's Pakistani Muslim, okay? Now, how many Nobel Prizes are won by Jews? It's like the fourth of the Nobel Prizes, okay? Some high fraction of the total. And then look, how many Muslims are there in the world? It's like a billion Muslims. How many Jews? 15 million tops, okay? So you ratio these numbers, had Islam not collapsed in its intellectual standing in the year 1100, and you just do the ratios, they would have every single Nobel Prize today. So the fact that it's not only just a few, it's near zero, is deeply worrying. I'm concerned about what lost, what, 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 what brilliance may have expressed itself and did not in that community over the past thousand years.